Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a condo tour. So before we begin, this condo is 500 square feet, is located within the entertainment district. So it's walking distance to the Eaton Center, Nathan Phillips Square, Young Dundas Square, and I could even see the CN Tower from my window. It's a very small space so I had to get creative with storage solutions, so I have some great tips as well to maximize your space. So starting from the entryway, there's a lot of wasted hallway space. I keep my Dyson vacuum plugged in here though. One thing I don't like about this condo is that there's no closet in the bedroom and only one long hallway closet so I have to store my clothes where everyone hangs their coats and bags. There is a built-in vertical shoe rack which is useful though. Over here I have an IKEA LAC table. The previous tenant used this as a TV stand but I bought my own so I just keep this table here in the closet with my board games. So far I have Betrayal of House on the Hill for Autumn, Santa's Workshop for Winter, Everdell for spring, and I want to get root for summer. Over here, I bought this coat rack from Home Depot for $38, and my landlord mounted it for me so I could hang some bags and make use of the space here. I also got the space saving clothes hangers from Showcase for $10, and they're really sturdy metal. Over here, I also have a hanging storage from IKEA to store my clothes, because going vertical is the way to go when you have limited space. The unit comes with a washer and dryer. It says large capacity, but honestly, it's tiny, and I find that one load is only like five outfits. To the left is a bathroom, standard sink, toilet, and shower. I got the soap dispenser, soap dish, and tooth mug from Walmart. Each thing was around $5. Below the sink, there's cleaning supplies and toilet paper. Oh, also to create more storage space, I bought this over the toilet shelf from Canadian Tire for $139. It took all day to build, by the way, but I could store some more toiletries here. This fake plant I got from Dollarama for $4, and behind it is my air freshener. So if we keep walking, we get into the bedroom. The bed, drawers, and mirror were left behind by the previous tenants. The mirror originally had a black frame, but I just covered it with contact paper. It's mounted to the wall with command strips. Actually, most of my things are mounted with command strips or command hooks, so I'm just one earthquake away from everything crashing down. This mail holder over here is from Amazon, $36.99, and it's held up by command strips as well. The clock is from Walmart for $12.97, the fake hanging plant is from Dollarama for $2.50, and the crystal pendulum I got many, many years ago from the c &E. And I love the way everything goes together. Over here is my desk. Now this is an example of me not following instructions for anything. First of all, the desk is actually not a desk. When I was first furnishing this condo, there were furniture shortages at IKEA due to the pandemic, so I couldn't get the Mickey desk. So I got the Inga Torp dining table instead, and I just built it without the floating sides. The add-on is the Pile add-on from IKEA, $39, and I got this idea from another YouTuber and built it upside down and only put in one shelf when there's supposed to be like three. And over here, this little shelf is actually a $4 cutlery drawer from Dollarama, but I used it as a trinket shelf to store my washi tape. This owl figurine I got from Umomo, and this Totoro planter I got from a store in Langham Square. The air plant was alive when I bought it, but I never took care of it, so now it's dead. Oh, and this Spirited Away music box is from my brother. He got it off of Amazon and it plays Always With Me, which is actually the same song as the intro, but a different part. Let me show you. So over here are, I have some notebooks. This is my journal and I got it from Muji. They have a free ink stamping station and my friend Lutan helped me choose which stamps to use. And this Rilakkuma notebook is from the coffee and chocolate collection. I got it from a store called One's Better Living. I bought it the first summer I was able to get a minimum wage job. Same with this vintage Lenhua notebook. I also have a vintage Japan Post box coin bank. And these are items that you can't find in stores anymore. I've kept them all these years and bring them with me, move to move, because they're so precious to me. Down here we have stationery that I use for journaling or pen palling. I keep them in this photo album or this clear makeup case from Bed Bath & Beyond I got for $29.59 by using a 30% off coupon. 
I store my kawaii memo sheets in this binder and I hold important documents in this Sumiko Garashi folder I got from Umomo. Over here I have a strap-on pencil case that I made a pattern for and sewed myself. There is a zipper on, on the side here so I could keep some pens, stickers, and washi tapes. Super useful. Over the bed I have a cork board I got from Staples for $19.99 and I use it to display some of my pen pal letters. On top I have an amigurumi cow that I crochet myself. On this side is the IKEA Billy bookcase which was $75. I have some books in this Basilar tea tin and a mini glass from Umomo. I got this night table from a store called Country Lane at Upper Canada Mall for $160. This lantern lamp I got online from Muskoka Lifestyle for $69.99 USD. I don't recommend buying from them if you're Canadian because I had such a bad experience with the huge custom fees which were almost as much as the lamp. But if you're in the US, it's definitely a high quality piece and is dimmable too. Super aesthetic. And I think that's all for the bedroom. Moving on, we get into the living room and kitchen area. This wall isn't wood, but contact paper I got from Amazon for $125. I have some hooks here, which I use to hold up signs for my Halloween and Christmas decor. For spring and summer, I could hold up paintings, but I haven't gotten there yet. Here I have the Hems bookcase from Ikea, $190. For spring, I have this fake hanging plant from Ikea in a terracotta pot I got from Michael's a vintage rabbit teapot I got from the thrift store, these books in the background from the thrift store as well, and these fake books, Birdhouse and Honey Jar, are all from Dollarama. The fake books are actually storage boxes which I use to hold random batteries and clips and junk. Down here I have a basket for my craft supplies, a wood crate to hold random baking tools and cups and paper plates, and a wine crate which I use to hold random cables and stuff. And over here is my showstopper piece. This is the Canvas Marseille Electric Fireplace from Canadian Tire. The full price is $1,000, but I managed to get it on sale for half price, so it was $500. It's super cozy, and the side panels slide up for more additional storage space. So the TV, sofa, and rug were left behind by the previous tenant, so I have no idea where they're from. For the coffee table, I'm using the IKEA Nesna nightstand, and I slapped one of their wooden coasters on top. Finally, we get to the kitchen. The unit came with an island, but it was black marble, which I didn't like, so I ordered some butcher block contact paper and covered it, as well as the kitchen counters. Also, the tiles were originally some ugly brown tile, so I got some white backsplash tiles from Amazon and I stuck on myself and I was super happy with how everything turned out. These black chairs came with the unit, but I got these wooden counter height chairs from Facebook Marketplace for $50, which matched a new kitchen aesthetic. Over here, I have a wooden tray from Canadian Tire. For a fruit bowl, I'm using this tier tray I got from Walmart for $10 during the holidays. And I store my takeout cutlery and napkins in this flower and garden bucket I got from Umomo for $5.50. Down here, the microwave is actually built into the island, which is useful. And in this drawer, I use it to keep my staples, like rice, oatmeal, and chia seeds. The fridge is built into the cabinet too, so it all blends in. I got this hanging storage from Amazon for $25. And as a springtime mascot, I have a little Kappa keychain I crocheted. I was planning on using this to hold random things like spare keys or snacks or whatever, but so far I only have this packet of gum I got in the mail. Over here in the middle of the kitchen, there's a lot of empty space, but I made use of it by hanging my utensils on command hooks, putting up a cork board, which I hang my garlic on, and this floating spice rack I got from Ikea for $3.99. I saw this hack on a DIY blog to put up these heavy duty command hooks and hook the spice rack on it so I was able to mount it without drilling any holes. These oven mitts, or more like oven gauntlets because they're so huge, are from a store in British Columbia called Kitchen Therapy for $21.98. On their website they don't have a shipping option, only curbside pickup so how it works is that they call you and ask you to read your credit card information over the phone 
so they could charge for shipping, which sounds sketchy, but I really wanted these oven mitts and luckily I got them. Down here I have another fake plant from Dollarama, and I got this cute house-shaped shelf from the thrift store for $7.99, which I used to hold some of my spices. I don't really cook those, so it's more for decor. In my cabinets here, I have some plates and bowls, seasonal mugs, and over here are my pots and pans, containers, and I got this under the cabinet storage for $14.99 from Canadian Tire. And I use it to hold some cute plates I got from Umomo or One's Better Living, and this stainless steel mug and Calvin the Cat mug. So I think that's it. That's basically my entire condo. That's the end of the tour. I'm grateful that I was able to create a home full of pieces that I love. Sometimes I'm just amazed that all these beautiful things in here are mine and I get to live in a place that reflects what I like. Because if you don't like the environment you live in, do you really like your life? I hope you're able to find some inspiration from this video and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.